Good day, friends. Slightly different one here today, um, in as much as it's two jobs from the same client. And the reason I'm doing two in one video, which I don't like doing, by the way, um, but the reason I'm doing two in one is they are both next and they both need working on. Before I get to that, why am I wearing a mask? I hear you ask. Uh, I've got workmen in today, they're doing some plastering on the top floor, second floor up there, so uh, and they're in and out and down and around, so I'm going to work around them. And uh, obviously I've got to wear a mask because of Covid, but anyway. I do believe these have come from um, Shetland Islands. Is it Shetland? Or the Channel Islands, hang on a minute. Uh, well it's a ZE1 postcode, whatever that may be. Can't remember where they said they were from. Anyway, two next. One needs a refret, one needs some fret work. I'm going to remove them. Together, like so. Just put that out of the way a minute. I've already had them open and had a look inside. One is a Telecaster neck. It, there you go, Tele on there. I've written that on. It is a compound radius and it wants refretting. Now, the good thing about compound radius is to refresh it differently to a regular neck because we obviously can't use one radius call to press all the frets in. I'm actually not going to be doing the refret yet on this. I'll take a while in a second. Um, so what we have to do is we have to change the pressing call or that's the radius, the call we use as a different radius. We're going to use different ones along the whole length of the neck. And um, also, I've ordered some new tools. Uh, in fact, I've ordered a fretting jig from GMC, uh, which is somewhere in England or Britain. Uh, Gary Carter, uh, he makes bluthy tools. And this jig is something really rather special. Let me grab my phone, because I've got pictures on the phone. And it's a fretting jig, it's a jig where it will accept any shaped guitar whether it be acoustic uh, bolt on neck or a set neck glued in neck and it has certain devices built in that support a uh, say for instance you're working uh, you're refretting a um, an acoustic guitar it's got certain bits that go and support the body in the sound hole you know where the neck goes over the body it supports underneath so you're able to press frets in along the whole length of the neck. The tool itself was not cheap. Um, it was, I think it's cost me £433. I do have pictures here. Let's see if I can show you. Can I save the image? Yeah, I can save that image. Good thing about saving the images this way is I can then view them on my phone. Just bear with me a second. I know this is making the video long-winded, but it's just the way it is. Not in there. Maybe I could have prepared this before I started. Take this off. I don't think we're going to come down to share. You might hear them banging. It's uh, no can do about that. We're going to pull up it. Photos. For whatever reason, it's not saved. Right, okay. Let's see what I can do here. There is the jig with the guitar on it. Can you see that? How good's that? Oh, pause and have a look there. And uh, if I go back and show the other one, all gadgets and goodness on there. That's from GMC, GMC Luthia Supplies. And I've got that on the way. It's going to take, it, it makes them to order. It's going to take a couple of weeks for him to make that, but I, this is what I'm going to use. I could use my jig over here. Let's, uh, let's not commit just yet, it all depends. But this is a Telecaster one. It might have been better removing them tuners, sending that, but there you go. Let's look at the state of the frets here. They're not very nice, are they? They're really quite horrible. Uh, so we are refretting the whole lot. Now, I do believe, the radius of this is nine and a half up to 14 inches. I'm just going to get my um, gubbins. Unbelievable. I've got stuff there. The actual banging you can hear, it's 
sounds like it's coming from next door. It's not. We had, that's the chimney rest behind me then. It goes all the way up to the second floor. We've got a three story house here. Ground level, first floor, second floor. Anyway, that side. Let's have a look and see where we are. Okay. Let's put up that bang in. So we are this end. Should be a 14 inch radius and we are a 14 inch radius that certainly ties in with what I've been told this end we should be I'm not sure it should be nine and a half up there let's go with the nine and a half if I've got the radius gauge the other radius gauge I'm going to hold that there. yeah nine and a half at that end yep 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 yep, yep beautiful Oh, we're certainly we're 14 in this end. So we are nine and a half inch this side, 14 inch this side. So we're going to have to press them all in using different calls. So I will start with a nine and a half going up two or three. We'll move to a 10 uh, round about here. Then we'll move up to a, uh, well, let's go. We'll go nine and a half round about up to here. We'll move up to a 10, move up to a 12 and move up to a 14. Uh, but we'll use various calls anyway to make sure everything is pressed in nice. We're not going to need a respray with this. I know Arthur was a bit concerned he might need the neck respray, and I told him that's going to be another 1900 quid because I'd have to send it away to get it done. It might even be more than that. But I'm thinking I can get these frets out nice and clean. There is a little bit. See, what he thought was cracking, that is not cracking. All this is smeg off his fingers. It's not cracked lacquer. So the lacquer there is intact. Now, I am going to have to cut down the sides of the frets because the lacquer is built up to the edge of the frets. It may cause cracking, probably is going to, it all depends. I've got a nice um, X-Acto knife I can use to cut that, but it still might crack the lacquer. Uh, what I am planning to do is, all being well, I'm going to use the same size fret wire, but if we do crack the lacquer, I'm going to, I'm going to fret over it, and I'll use a slightly wider fret. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this fret wire. All this part of the video is, it's introductory, is to explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how I'm going to go about it. Fret wire I'm going to be using will be, uh, all being well, Sintom's Elite. Sintom's Elite in as much as it, it's their hardest and best fret wire. I've been using Sintom's for a couple of years, or for a few years, but I've been using it exclusively for about two years. And they came out with a, uh, an Elite fret wire. Uh, elite because it's the hardest nickel silver fret wire on the planet and by hard I mean it's, 20, it's got 25% nickel in it. It's called nickel silver, actually doesn't contain any silver at all but we call it nickel silver because it's silver in colour and it's nickel. It's got 25% 20, nickel content. Uh, nickel is a what, uh, what gives the frets its hardness. Um, so it's the hardest nickel silver fret wire on the planet. Now regular fret wire in regular guitars for many many years was 12% nickel silver. Over the last few years, or so last 10 maybe even more years, the harder fret wire was 18% nickel silver which I used for many years. But this nickel silver was 25% came out 2-3 years ago or I discovered it 2-3 years ago and I started using it just over 2 years ago and it is, it is very very hard. Not as hard as stainless but it's very hard. It will give you, it will last you a lot lot longer than uh, 12 or 18%. And um, it's really good fret wire. And it's not that, it is more difficult to work, but it is not any more expensive than regular 18%. So I started using it a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and everyone loves it. I don't know how many fret jobs on it, probably about 20. And it's really good. So I'm going to be using that on here. The good thing about it is, it's also very high fret wire, 1.4 millimeters high. It means down the line, in many years, you can get two or three levels out of it. Because once it starts wearing, it goes down about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 mil, we can get another level and we can recrown them and use them again. So that should, in effect, I would be surprised if you didn't get 50 years out of this fret wire. I don't know, I can't put a time on it. Even if you're a very hard player and you're gigging all the time, it's gonna last you many, many, many years and many years longer than 12% and quite a few years longer than 18%. So I'm going with the 25% nickel silver, Sintom's Elite. Regarding the nut, nut seems to be a little bit low. Uh, I'm going to replace the nut with a bone nut. I'm not sure if this is bone, it might be bone, it might be a hard resin type thing, I don't know. The other thing with this is when you remove them, you're going to get a little bit of chipping on the lacquer just there. 
I will cut that with a knife before I remove the nut, which means we shouldn't get any damage around here. I'll make sure I cut it exactly square. You see what I'm saying? And we should get it out nice and clean. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit awkward to get out. If we have to, we'll saw it down the middle and we'll collapse it in on itself, get rid of that. So yeah, not a problem with this. Refretting this is going to cost you 225 pounds to refret because I'm working around lacquer, so I've got to be careful around there. Uh, a refret before you start, but a standard refret is going to cost you 200 pounds. Once you start working around lacquer, there's an extra charge, uh, and it's going to cost you 15 pounds for refret wire, 10 pounds for a nut. Uh, the price includes a nut fitted, so that's going to be 250 pounds for that one. Now the second one of the two, I was going to, before we get there, let me just measure this fret wire. It looks to be 2.6, 2.5, 2.6 mil wide. So it's modern, it's a modern fret wire. So I'm going to go with the same fret, same, I do, I think I have some 2.5 in stock, St. Tom's Elite. Now the thing is with 2.5, it is not as high as the 2.3 over 2.8. It is only 1.2 mil high, but that's plenty. Just zero this out. All right, well, zero it out. Just measure with the caliper. That is really fat fret wire. It's 2.6. So pretty much what I thought it was going to be, 2.6 mil. Give me 2.5. Anything between 2.5 and 2.6 here. So I'm going to go with 2.8. Zero that. Off we go. Uh, I'm just going to pause the video a minute. I'll come back in a few seconds. It just happens that I actually have some 2.8 mil fret wire in stock and I already have some cut up for another job. But that job has been put on hold because I'm waiting for the um, new jig to arrive. It's going to take another two weeks. So I'm going to use this fret wire. I'm just going to check that everything uh, fits. How many frets do we have? We do have 22 frets. I've got 22 in there plus one spare. That was going to be a zero fret on another guitar. So I'll just check that everything is wide enough and yeah we've got plenty we've got ample on this fret wire it's all slightly wider than it needs to be so i have a fret wire for this job so maybe i will do this without a jig i can press it in on my normal press over there uh, my old style press uh, which is my arbor press and uh, yeah so i can crack on with this like i said i'm going to replace it not so that one is ready to be done i may start it today i may not i may just drop onto this one this is the second of the two next arthur has sent and this i believe is a i think it's a strap neck now this one is stainless steel which means it's going to be more difficult to work a lot more difficult to work now unfortunately i've just bought a load of new files from stumac uh, I'm buying my, I'm not faffing about with crap tools anymore. I'm buying, not exclusively from Stumac, but I am buying the best quality tools available. All my new files are from Stumac. They cost anything from 70 to 100 pounds each. I've had about four or five delivered recently. I've spent loads of money. I've spent about 2,000 quid on tools in the last couple of months. But anyway, stainless steel frets on a strap neck um, it does have one of these fandangled new, what do you call them, these nuts? The whatever, some weirdly spaced anyway for intonation purposes. I could not remove that, so I'm going to have to work around it, which makes things a bit more difficult. Also, them being stainless steel, they are a lot more difficult to work. Now, this one has got two dings on fret 10, I believe. You did say one ding. There is a ding there below my finger. It's a groove, and there's one also on this top side. It looks like something's dropped on it. So I'm going to, have to level the whole lot and recrown the lot. I'm charging him. I think it says we're charging 155 pounds for this. I can't remember off the top of my head. I know I've quoted him a price for both of them. Okay. Always, I'm always a little bit saddened by how these decals look on these guitars because that looks like it's just been stuck on after the effect. Um, but it is. It's a warmth neck, so it is licensed. So it is allowed to have that on there. And that's probably the way it is. Yeah, it is, it's licensed by Fender, you see. Da, 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 da. So you are allowed to do that. It's maybe, I, he didn't want it lacquered, obviously, or lacquered properly. It's got a matte kind of lacquer on there. I think you could have done better with that. But, you know, it looks apart. Anyway, that aside, I'm being paid 
to level, recrown, and polish these frets, which is what I will do. Uh, I'm charging more because it costs more to work this fret wire uh, because it's going to cost me more on tools. So um, that's it. So that's probably the one I'm going to do first. So bear with me, I'm going to get everything set up and we'll come back and I'll explain a little bit more in depth about how we go about it. Ah, again, this is a compound radius, same as the last one, 9.5, 14. That makes things more difficult because it is... When we do a compound radius, when we're levelling frets, we have to do it a different way to do it a normal radius because a compound radius is basically, it is not a, uh, imagine the radius, a, 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 a constant static radius, like you've got a nine and a half inch radius, that is a cylindrical shape. So you've got the same radius all the way down the neck. But when you've got a compound radius, nine and a half, 14, you're not, you're no longer a cylinder going down the length. You're actually a cone and it's a wider cone at this end than it is at this end. So you, so you start this end, you go like that. And as you get closer to the head start, you come in and come in and come in. It's a conical shape. And to level frets that way, you have to do it slightly different. Whereas on a cone or a static radius, we'll use an example of a 12 inch radius. We get 12 inch radius and all we do is with the leveling beam, we go up and down in a straight line. And when it gets to doing this side, we slightly overlap at this side, uh, which ma maintains that radius. If you went in that way, you'd make a cone. Now what we're doing when we, um, level frets on a um, on a compound radius, we follow the lines of the strings. So for instance, when I'm coming down the edge at this end, I'm not overlapping at this end, I'm actually following it down the edge. And the thing with that is we are not able to do that with the nut intact. I've got to remove that nut somehow without, without breaking it, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, so remember that. I'm going to put the neck there so you can see. Let me get this out of the way because you can't see with the white background there. It makes everything confusing. So I'll just get that out of the way. So imagine there, I'm going to be following the lines of the strings. So down the centre, we're going to be going straight. But when we're coming in at this end, we're going to actually follow the line. So we're going to have the levelling beam angled. So we just follow in a straight line. We're going to follow the strings. And that way, we maintain the radius at that end and the radius at this end. Uh, I hope that's explained it. It is can be weird to understand unless you see it in action. Uh, I'll go to show more about it when uh, when I'm doing it. Oh, there was something else I've spotted. There is also a ding on fret number 11. So you've got fret 11 and two dings on fret 10. So like something's dropped on there and cut into. It might have been not and it's fallen. The next fall and it's hit something hard and the strings have dug in. So I don't know. If you both see it, I'm gonna let me get a um, a non-permanent marker pen, and I can show you where the things are. I'm gonna bring it up to the camera just to show you, but we're going to file the frets down to the level of these dings. Can I just imagine that ding on the 11th fret there because I can't see it now? Maybe I did. I think I did, you know. I think I just imagined that. Maybe there was a here on the fret or something. There's not a ding on there now. But anyway, I've marked this fret, fret number 10. And inside the two blue dots on each end, there is a ding on there. I don't know if you can see it. I'll hold it as straight as I can. It's on this fret here. Between the two dots at the top, between the two dots at the bottom, there are cuts or dings in there. Just looking at the fret height. These are about... 1.2 millimeters high. It means we can take about 0.2 millimeters off if we need to. Uh, it is a lot harder work. It's gonna be hard on tools. It's why we charge more for this. I normally have to replace a file uh, once I've done a stainless steel one. The leveling files are about 25 quid. Uh, my profiling files are about 70 pounds each. That's why we're factoring much more. It's why we charge a lot more for doing a stainless steel refret. If I was doing a stainless steel refret, you're going to be looking in the region of £350 for a basic one. 
uh, and if you've got binding or a lacquered neck or ebony which we have to repair the chips in ebony you're looking at about 400 quid for a stainless steel refret um, it's just we have to do it because it costs us so much in tools but anyway I'm going to get this one prepped I'm going to try and get this nut removed I'm going to remove the tuners as well obviously I'm going to have to um, just check the scale there. I know it's a 25 and a half Going to check how straight the neck is or isn't. Arthur also said there are some high frets at the, at the dusty end. Yeah, that neck's not straight yet, so we need to get that straight anyway. So let me get everything prepped up um, and we'll try and remove the nut. It's called a compensated nut. That's the word I was looking for, compensated. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do this one first. This is going to be a long video, I think, because I'm doing the two in one. Uh, but because they are both compound radii, you like that, because they're both compound, it makes sense for me to do both in one video. So uh, stick with me on this. You know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a little adventure. It's going to be fun. For me, it's always fun. I, I love it. Just having a little check down some of these frets, and they are little dings, just in certain areas, very very light dings, but they are going to make a difference. Um, yeah, I can, see, I can see. These are more, where I'm saying there's a ding on that 11 fret, it's not a ding, but it is quite a deep scratch on there. So anyway, let me get all set up and prepped. Um, I'll bring you back in later. Okay, I've spoken to the client regarding this, um, this knot. Now the thing is with this, it's not a normal compound or compensated knot. We're normally half in, half out. This one isn't a stepped one, it's a full flat one, and I can't find one anywhere. So I've had to come up with a solution. And uh, I've come up with an idea which the client has agreed to. And what I'm gonna do is, because I'm removing more material here at this end, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna remove more material from these frets and less from here. So we're gonna go at a slight, a slight angle. So these frets at this end are gonna be ever so, ever so slightly higher than these until we've skimmed all of these uh, two dents off there. So if, we, if you imagine we have a neck level like that we're basically going to go slightly downhill that way I don't have to come right up to the last fret I'm only leveling up to here um, I'm going to build a little ramp area just here in case the um, leveling beam does scoot up and over I've actually leveled frets in the past with a little ramp at this end to stop me removing me not so that is the best compromise end of the day we're still only going to be removing about 0.15 millimeters from the top of the frets this end maybe even less than that 0.05 at this end it's the best compromise it means we can still get the frets level we don't have to remove the knot the problem with removing the knot is i cannot find a replacement anywhere of that type uh, the guy totally forgot this was a compound radius if it was just a normal regular radius uh, constant all the way through it would have been a lot easier for me to level with the nut in place so um, we've had to work around it that way i don't have a choice at all I, if I was really careful, maybe I could have done it, but we need to level this one as well. It means we're going to come right up and we're going to be hitting the nut with the beam unless I build that ramp. The problem with building a ramp and coming up at this end, scooting over the top, is it means the lower part of the beam is going to hit these frets and it might take more material from this end than is needed. So like I say, we're going to go with, this, with the very, very slightly ramped approach. Uh, very, very, nowhere near as pronounced as I'm making it. But it's going to be the best solution so I'm going to do it with just a leveling beam I'm going to get this neck set straight I'm going to get it all jigged up and uh, once that's done I'll come back again with it set up ready to rock and we'll crack on I'm using a different method today something I've never actually thought of doing before and where I've always bolted the neck to a piece of 30 mil MDF I'd always set that on the jig, but I thought, hang on a minute, why don't I just clamp it to the table, which is exactly what I've done. So it's as sturdy as anything. We supported the headstock underneath with a couple of blocks and some business cards so we don't mark or scratch anything. We've set the neck dead straight, which I've already checked more than once. And what I've done is with tape and um, some shims, I've built up a, basically I built up a ramp going higher than the nut. So when I come across with a leveling beam, which I'm going to be using, I'll explain more about this in a minute. When I get to this fret, if I go too far, 
I'm going to scoot up and miss the nut. What I need to do is make sure I don't dig down into this area. This is why I'm going to remove more material from this side than this side. So the frets are going to get be going to be highest here. It's getting slightly lower to this end. We're not going to remove a stupid amount of anything. I can see the frets that have got the two dings in there. And back to what I was on about. Um, I think I've got this marked. What is which? I do. Got two different grits of sandpaper on this leveling beam. Now this leveling beam is from Crimson Guitars. It is milled precision straight. I have two grits of sandpaper on there. 400 grit at the top, 240 at the bottom. I'm going to go with the 240 grit. And I'm going to be following the, where the, the way the strings would go. So I'll be going right to the edge. But I won't be, if I was doing a normal neck with a normal radius, a constant radius, I'd be overlapping this side and just following everything in a straight line. But because it's a compound radius, I'm going to be following the lines of the strings. So I'm going to do the same there as well. And it's just going to be a matter of, and I'm going to be using the 240 grit to start with. And I'm actually going to do it live now. Now, I do know I have a neck set dead straight. We, we can remove the uh, just a wrench. And I'll wrench here. This, by the way, on this, uh, it's a warm-up neck. It is a 532 size. Let me get that out of the way. So all we're going to do, radius is just going to follow the lines. Make sure I'm on the four, uh, 240. Which I'm just going to follow the lines. Once I hit that last one, I'm going to stop short of hitting the nut. And when I get to closer to the middle, I'm going to go in a straight line. And I'm going to follow again the line. Concentrating more on this end. And all I'm going to be doing is checking that we're removing material from here. Not pressing down, nice and light strokes. Again, checking this one seems to be a little bit lower because we're not touching that fret yet which is very very odd but we are touching these frets it's just the way it goes Very interesting. It is going to take time. They are stainless steel frets. crack on with this still not touching that one and that one I'm going to crack on get this one take my time but you see we're not knocking the nut which is fantastic we've got some this is folded copper tape actually but I've stepped it down so it's below this fret here so that really works so I'm going to crack on get this done until we've got these frets especially this one still not being touched yet uh, I'm going to crack on, get it done. When it's done, I will come back and we'll show you how we've maintained the radius at 14 there and nine and a half there. So off camera, I went a little more aggressive with my fret leveling file. This is a diamond surface file, precision flat. And I use this to level everything, move all the more stubborn areas I needed to do. Uh, I've checked everything. I've been across with a fret rocker and the frets are level. So I've just marked them up in uh, marker pen again, Sharpie, permanent marker. I'm now gonna finish off with the 400 grit side, which is a smoother paper, which will remove the deeper scratches and make them easier to polish later on. I've got a nice even um, remo material removal along the whole length, so I've re removed just about as much material this end as I have this end. I've checked the radii, that is still nine and a quarter, this is still 14. 
so we know we've done everything right. So just a few strokes with this, 400 grit, and we should be done. Remembering to follow the string lines. And just a few light strokes, and all of the pen is removed everywhere. That means we've got a nice, even level. Beautiful, so that's all done. Just gonna give it a quick brush. No pen on the tops of any of the frets, which is fantastic. So I will take my radius gauge. 14 inch there, we'll just check this fret, the last one. And that is perfect, beautiful. Nine and a half, here it is, nine and a half. Let's check this end, again, perfect. So we have a radius nine and a half there, 14 there, everything. If everything is level between there, we know we've done the job right. So I'm gonna take the fret rocker, and we're gonna check all of the frets. I do apologize if you can hear an engine outside. I've just started the car up, I've got to nip out, and it's been still a few days cold, so. I do have, I've actually bought myself a private plate. I do have a registration frets, FR54ETS. Looks great, fitting with prep friend. I tried to get F friend, but I could only stick that on a 2021 car, so uh, didn't buy that. This one was cheap, cheap number plate, cost me 166 pounds for the registration and some fees on top. Really pleased with that. But anyway, back to here. These frets are all level. I've already checked them, I know they're level. So that is how you level the frets on a compound radius neck. Just bear with me a second, I've got someone coming down the stairs, I've got a workman here today. Just again, the workman wanted to come through this room. Um, that's the disadvantage of having this as a, in a terrace house at the front of the terrace house. Um, but you know, a ho, it works for me. Anyway, they are finished now, they have gone, so you know, you've got my full attention. So frets on our level. I bought the camera in at this angle because you may now be able to see that the frets are all flat across the top there and what we're going to do is we are going to check that they are well first we're going to check that the next straight so I'm going to remove this little ramp I put there for the knot and you'll be able to see how I fashion this and that is just some you know copper tape use for shielding. I've just folded, folded, folded like a step, almost like a step pyramid type affair. We made a little ramp and we made a ramp up to the knot so if we did come across here we went up and over the knot. That worked absolutely brilliantly. I'll use that again in the future. So just again check that we still, we have maintained the level straightness of the neck which we absolutely have which is always very very good news move that out of the way. So with the frets le now leveled you'll see we, we are flat across the top this way which is fantastic. I can see where we've flat, flat, flattened all of the frets, even this one. Probably a little bit less material on this one than the rest of them but what we're going to do is we're going to take my fret rocket and we're going to check everything. We were up to here last time but I've decided to just do the lot again. You know me with my videos if there's any things doubled up I'll leave them in. I'll leave any mistakes in any little errors. I don't edit the videos as such. Uh, if there's something really wrong I need to remove, I will do, but I normally just glue these things together and just uh, bang them out as they are. So sometimes you do get um, me repeating things on videos. And like I say, these videos, though they are educational, they are not how-to videos. They're not set out to be how-to videos. They're not set out to be instructional. These are basically a record for myself. And a record for the client so the client can see what work we had done. It works great, I've always videoed everything, it works great for me and my clients because they love having the videos. Uh, my followers on YouTube seem to love them and it makes me money and it doesn't make me a lot, it makes me £25 a week but it's free money. You know, and I love doing them but like I say, these are not educational nor how to videos, they are 
just for me and my client. And if you get anything educational out of them, you learn from them, that's absolutely fantastic. I do know what I'm doing, I am a professional. By the way, these frets are really uh, exciting me. We don't have any rocking frets at all, they are fantastic. But there you go, the frets are level. Again, just to show you guys uh, that we have maintained the radius, I'll repeat here, nine and a half inch radius at this end, 14 inch radius at the far end. Let me take, let me try and find, we'll go with the nine and a quarter first because I've got that one to hand. Nine and a quarter, I hope you can see that. I'm just gonna place that on the fret. And there you go, that's that one. I'm gonna go down to the other end. Uh, we're gonna look for the 14 inch one, it is somewhere. I will get to it eventually. 14 inch radius gauge. And there you go. So we've maintained the compound radius along the whole length. The tops of the frets are now flat, but they are all level. I'm just checking fret 11 where we have the divot there and a divot there. The divots are now gone. That is fantastic news. I'm just going to ever so lightly go over with some more 400 grit. I'm going to use my smaller one. This is the one I used before, the Crimson Guitars. I do actually have a smaller one from GMI in Greece. I've got some 400 grit which is well used on this edge and I'm just going to smooth off everything. It, it will remove some more of the scratches and I'm just going to go up to this last fret just overlapping not hitting the nut. I could always put my finger there anyway. Just being very careful. want to with a finger there just make sure that we have removed sufficient material from the first fret because I was being a little bit conservative when I got up to this end of the neck because I've, I've still got the knot on there so we're just going to go just make sure This has been a fantastic tool. This is a this is a clothes brush. I've been using it for years. You see where it's worn down here, just for cleaning up necks when I've been working on them. So again, we're going to work from the back to the front now. Just checking everything. Also, I'm happy that these are spot on level. We're going to tape up the fingerboard. I'm going to recram these frets. Again, these are stainless steel. They take a lot more work than regular nickel silver frets. Quite a lot more work than um, Jeskar Evo Gold frets. Again, the Evo Gold ones are difficult to work. They are very hard frets. But stainless steel is very hard on tools. Now, fortunately, I've been and bought a load of new files, but I'm going to be using my regular files. Should be pretty good. Good thing about stainless as well, it doesn't take as much polishing, I find, as nickel silver. And the great thing about stainless is it stays polished. But we will be going my regular route with six to seven different uh, grits of um, sandpaper, wet and dry, even though I only do it dry. So there you go, the frets are all level. That is fantastic news. So what we need to do next is we need to recrown these frets. And by recrown, I mean where we have flattened them across this way, we need to rebuild that crown that way. I have files to do that job to make it a lot easier for me. I'm just going to check these frets and check the height. I am so pleased with the height of these frets. We've maintained a good height along the whole length. Excuse me. I'm just going to grab a caliper and I'm going to measure. Because I, didn't, I meant to measure before I did the frets. I actually didn't do that. I meant to. I'm looking at them, they're certainly over one millimetre high. I'm going 1.1 millimetres, maybe. Just zero the caliper out. <clears throat> can be quite difficult to measure with a caliper because um, 
With the neck not being flat underneath, with it being arm ups, it can be quite difficult to measure. Also get that in. Right, okay, we'll zero everything out. So there's a caliper. I'm just going to take, going to go in at number five here, and I'm going to measure top. And that's saying 23.7. We're going to come inside. I'm saying 22.7. So we've certainly got, we've certainly got one millimeter height, 23.72. Oh, 22 point, saying 22.45, 23.77, so that's saying about 1.3, but we must take into consideration that the neck thin is thinner at this end and fatter at this, so it's getting thicker as we go along the length. So the neck's thinner there, a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker. So if that's saying about 1.3, I'm quite happy to say about 1.15, getting up to 1.2 height on those frets. I'm trying to find somewhere where the neck height is pretty consistent. So if I go this side, 24.13, go the other side, 23.1, this side, 23.15, it's saying. This is saying 24.3. So we're looking at a good height of getting up to 1.2 millimeters high on these frets. That is very encouraging. We've got a lot of height on those frets. That's fantastic. And we've maintained the height along the whole length. So these frets will last for a very long time. Uh, encouraging and great for the uh, owner. So all, like I said, all that remains for me to do now is to recrown those frets and then get them all polished up. Not going to touch the nut. We've removed hardly any height from those frets at all. So it's not going to make any difference to the action of the guitar. I don't even need to set this up on my neck. I can just um, send it back as is. It'll be absolutely fine on Arthur's guitar. So that saves me some time. What I am going to be doing, just before we crown, I'm going to tape up the whole fingerboard. Just going to leave the frets exposed, which is what we do. Now I'm going to show you what I mean about putting a strip down the length. It makes the tape easier to remove later. It's, isn't it ironic that I say these are not um, educational videos and now I'm probably talking more like a teacher than anything on this one video. Of course they are educational, they, not are, they are not released as educational videos. I'm sure they are educational to you guys and you're going to learn a lot from it. And I do do things the right way but I'm not setting out to do educational videos. There's not going to be a, 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 a DVD set that's going to be released. If you've gone at any information that's useful to you out of these videos, that's fantastic. But like I say, these are for my clients and myself. So we've always got some comeback, we've always got a record of what's been done, why it's been done, and how I went about it. So again, I'm taping off. It's going to be one long video of this, because like I say, I'm going to include the refret of the other neck. Reason being, they are both the same compound radius. And you're going to, I'm showing you one how to fret level one. And I'm going to show you how to refret one as well. So you're going to learn two complete jobs. All for one client. I will always have a word to say when I'm working, by the way. I'm very, very seldom I don't have anything to say. I just ask my church. My goodness. Here, I'm going to get up and pray for someone or to talk about Jesus. I'm your man. There you go. So we have take the edges. Now we're just going to. I'm not going to do this all on camera. I'm just going to show how I go about it using a thicker piece of tape. That's 19 mil wide, 25 mil, and that's 6 mil. And we use thinner bits as we get further along the length. We'll also we'll be doing using some overlap here and there. Uh, I'll show you how I do this. I'll go wide to wide, like so. And then I'll take a piece, I'll rip it down the centre, and this 
saves tape like so. So that half and half. So I don't need to use two full strips here. Could do, but you know. There you go. And when I get to somewhere like this where one piece is too wide, well there where one piece is too wide, I'll just rip it down the centre and I will go the side of one for right there, the side of one for right there. And on the next few I'll move to a smaller tape like so. So you get the idea. It's not rocket science. So I'm going to get that taped up. I'll do the same again this side. And when I get further along the neck, I'll use the 6mm as well. But what I'll do here is, again, small piece. Rip it down the centre, or close to somewhere near the centre anyway. Overlap, overlap. So I'm going to tape up the whole fingerboard. I think it's clearly evident now why I put that strip down the side. When I come to remove the tape, I can pull that strip up, it'll bring it all off in one go. That's the idea anyway. Seldom does that. But anyway, I'm going to get it all taped up. Once that's done, we'll get some files out and I will bring you back in and we will come and crown some frets. Okay, I want to be cracking on because I'm going to start losing my light pretty soon. We've got good light in here at the moment. We've got good daylight coming in through the front window. It's 3.47 p.m. I suppose we're going to start losing the light in, in an hour, so in about 45 minutes we won't have good enough light to work in here. Um, I will obviously have to work under my spotlight, but anyway, let's crack on with crowning these frets. So, crowning the frets, now it is so much easier crowning the frets nowadays than it was a few years ago. A few years ago we'd have been using a three-cornered file with ground flat or safe edges, and what we'd do with that kind of file is we'd imagine a three cornered file so it's shaped like an equilateral triangle and as you roll across the fret you'd start angling it over on the far side then the near side you do the same and angling it away and you'd slowly rebuild that crown and that's great it's the way I learned to do it it's fantastic but nowadays we don't have to do that the reason being we have these great tools here now I'm using these tools for now but these are going to be they're not going to last forever these tools because uh, I've used them quite a lot anyway I do have brand new ones in the cupboard, I'm not going to get out yet, but this is a very special file, it's a Stumac Z file. This is by Elmer, this again is a profiling file, it will cut that perfect shape. And these are both diamond edged files. Now let's get to the Stumac file, the great thing about this is, on this side it has a long cut, this side a short. You flip it 180 degrees, that side it has a short cut, this side a long. Uh, so you think, oh, why is that strange? Yeah, what this will not do, though, is it will not touch the top of a fret. It'll cut each side. It'll do one steep, and then on the second cut, it'll do it not so steep. So you're getting two cuts out of it on each side as you flip it over. But it'll leave a black line down the centre, which is brilliant because it'll help you rebuild that crown, but it won't be perfectly round. But that's where this one comes in. This will round out any of those rough edges that are not consistent with an arc. So we're going to use a combination of both files. They will work on stainless steel, but they will not last forever. Now this file I've had about over a year, and I've done a few stainless jobs on it. It's just great, but just a few strokes. You can be a bit gung-ho with it if you want. It won't take off more than you need to, and it certainly won't take anything off the top. And now there is a thin black line on the top of that fret. That is it. That is recrowned. That's how much it takes. We'll do the same with a couple of others. Always, always wipe the file. You could be a little bit gung ho if you want. You're not going to harm anything. Again, wipe the file. You always get that's coming off the pen. And each of these frets has a lovely thin black line across the top. Not so much on this one. I'm going to go a little bit more over the middle. And that means that we've not removed any material from the top. So because we know they are level, we know we have maintained the height. 
So we know that these frets are still level with all of these, so that's absolutely fine. And then what we're going to do, we're going to use this one here just to round everything off. Start at an angle. Again, just go over the top, come at an angle if you like, just to take any unevenness out. And again, this one. Normally, you just do one at a time and wipe the bar, but because I've already got them crowned, I can be a little bit more liberal. And there you go. And that is three frets crowned perfectly. It did not take me long at all. It would have taken a lot longer in the olden days. So we know these are going to be level. We're going to move on to the next one. And we're going to move on to that one. And if it's not level, we get a rock on this one here. But we don't have a rock. They are perfect. So that is recrowning the frets. So these three are ready for polishing. This is stainless steel, kids. It's not any uh, soft nickel silver. It's stainless steel. And look, doesn't take me long at all, does it? The time consuming part of this job is um, polishing. That's going to take a while. But there you go. That's well, let's get this, this one done. And once this is done, I'm going to move on to the polishing. I'm probably not going to film any of that on this neck because I can do that on the next one because I'm going to make this a two-in-one video. I'm going to actually reflect the other one on this video as well. And I'll show the polishing more in depth on the refret. But what I won't do on the refret is I won't be showing this crowning again. There's no need because you've already seen me doing it. And that's one good thing about doing a two-in-one video. But there you go. That's five frets done. I do have 16 more to do, 16, no, 17 more to do, so 22 fret affair. But there you go, that's five I've done in super quick time. Just check that they're still level, which they are. And how fantastic is that? You see, this comes with years of experience, knowing how quick you can do them. Uh, and the modern technology and getting diamond files like we've got nowadays makes the job a lot quicker. We can get things done, we can get more things done in a day, which means uh, end of the day we can earn a little bit more money as well, which is great because costs are always increasing. I rarely put my prices up that much. Uh, we always do a review every year, but I don't put them up that much. Uh, my refrets have gone up, I think I'll just put them up again to £200 for a basic refret, but considering how much tools have gone up and how much costs are now, you know, but it's certainly not in line with inflation and what I've had to, what I have to spend. But anyway, back to the uh, topic in question. We've got five done, they look fantastic. Once these are polished up, they will look wonderful. Got the rest to do, I'm going to get them all marked up, uh, get these all done. I'll move on to the polishing. I'll probably bring you back in sometime tomorrow. I'm imagining the polishing will already be done. But as mentioned uh, a minute or so ago, I will show more in depth polishing when I get to do the refret, which is going to be joined onto this video. We are next day, and a couple of updates. I didn't finish off polishing the frets, but well, in fact, I didn't start polishing the frets, but I have leveled and crowned the frets on the first neck. The second neck, I have pulled the frets, and that was very, very difficult. Probably the most difficult fret pull I've ever had, ever. Got all the frets out, all the slots are cleaned out. I've cleaned the neck up a little bit, uh, but getting these frets out was horrendously difficult there was was lacquer built right up to the frets to the edge of the frets which I had to cut through and I couldn't get my cutters or my fret pullers under the fingerboard so I've had to basically chop into the frets I'll show you a couple I've had to chop into them and kind of pull them that way and some of these were horrendous uh, you can see with the eyes oh, one this is a prime example prime example of one right here look at the top of the fret this end and I had to crush, basically get my nippers in and get it in and try and get them just under a side and I had to use a lot of pressure to get at them. Really, really messed up and chewed up there because I had to get either side. But I managed to do it without damaging the fingerboard. There is a little bit of damage on the fingerboard, but not too much. A couple of indentations where I've had to get the nipper right under, but nothing that stands out. There were quite a few chips, especially this area. Chips I've actually put back in there. I've got to sand that back flat. 
uh, some there, there's one there, there's a chip I repaired there, repaired that quite well, just under my finger. That'll get, but again we need sanding just a little bit, and there are three little edges, little tiny bits, uh, that I lost the chips. Anyway, I'm going to basically, all I'm going to do with this is, I'm going to get a tiny bit of stain on a brush, and I'm just going to drop some epoxy there, and I'm going to reshape the edges, so you're never going to tell anyway. Um, but that's the best we can do. But all in all, not a bad looking neck. Um, I've been talking to the owner, he says, would we not be better off going with stainless steel? I says, well, if you want to add £125 to the job, absolutely fine. Uh, he doesn't want to do that. But I said, look, with fret what I'm using, a 25% nickel silver should last you 30 years minimum anyway. So, so he's agreed to go with my recommendation. We are going to go with the uh, fret wire I recommended. Which is, is well hard anyway. There's no reason why it shouldn't last 30 years. So but I've got a couple of repairs to do on this. One there. One, two. It's not anything bad at all. Yeah, just two. Or four. Oh, no, there's one there as well. Three, there is a three. One, two, three. But there are dings in the neck anyway. One there. There's, uh, there's a couple I've seen one on this edge somewhere as well so there are dings on there it's not top top condition but it's good enough um still think we're fine there's this cut there i put in that with the blade cutting through the frets i slipped i'm just going to drop some epoxy in there and bring that back up you're not going to tell once it's dried and i'm going to sand these little areas polish them back a bit like I say, the fret slots have already been cut, so we're more or less, we're not far off ready to put the frets in. So that's where we are right now. I'm going to get that done today. I'm going to, well, I'm going to get this prep to put frets in today. Uh, it's likely I'm going to put the frets in tomorrow. This one, I'll get this one all polished up today. Once the frets are polished on this, this one's finished. You know, not a problem with this one at all. The frets feel fantastic, they're nicely crowned. Uh, they are level again. Well, they were level anyway. But yeah, they look fantastic. Just polishing up on there and that'll be great. So that's where we are. Nice and early in the morning. I've just finished up polishing these frets. Um, gone through with seven grits of paper. Finished off with finest grade steel wool. Uh, super fine steel wool. And we're just going to peel back. Or we're going to have an attempt to peel back the tape to reveal the frets. And this is why I put a strip down that edge just to get all this off. So we're gonna pull this up and you see how much easier this makes this and then I'm able to remove all the tape quite easily like that. So I'm gonna crack on and get this done. I'll be back in a second. And with the edges, or the edge all peeled back, we can remove more or less all of it, all of the tape quite easily. Whoops. Always very satisfying this. That looks wonderful. And there you go. We have the frets all leveled, beautifully polished. They look really really good doesn't that look fantastic and this one is finished <coughs> excuse me so I'm going to discard paper tape steel wool and the glove so we're now ready to move on to the other one and get the frets in the one now but this one's ready to go all I've got to do is unbolt it from this piece of MDF get this one wrapped up get it back in the box ready to ship then we'll go and finish um, Go and get the other one done. Oh, they're beautiful. They are so beautiful. I've been across and checked the level with a fret rocker again before I um, before I polish them. They are so good. That is so nice. As mentioned, I'm not going to touch the nut because it's a pre-cut nut. We've only taken a very tiny amount off the top of the frets anyway, so it's not really going to alter the action too much. Um, 
I'm not going to have to stick this on my body and check it and test it. What I'm going to do is going to set the uh, truss rod so the neck is dead straight and with the string tension pulling back it will give us a right amount of relief in there. Anyway, I've always found that to be the case. With the neck straight and my truss rod just nipped in there, put it on, put your strings on, you've always just got the right amount of relief. So that's great. So that one's done. Going to move on to the next one, finish the next one off. Regarding the frets, I am just tapping them in. Uh, using my fretting hammer, just tapping the edges in each side, not pressing them in yet. I'm going to press them in on the fret press. These bits of tape are just to show me when to change um, the call on the fret press, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be pressing the first few in with nine and a half radius, moving up to 10 radius, up to about here, from here to about here, 12 radius, and from here to the end, 14 inch radius. So it's just a matter of getting the frets. Checking we've got enough there, making sure the ends aren't bent over. And if we're not going to go in lightly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, uh, I will get a neck support underneath in a minute. But all I'm doing is just tapping the edges in. Not hitting them in the middle. I am going to be pressing them in with the fret press. Don't need any glue, I'm not going to be using any glue. And you'll see, I don't, I don't know how much you can see there, but they are not seated correctly. I will be using the fret press soon. That's a really big one for that side. Okay. Where's number four? Where's that one from? I must have picked it from the wrong side. Anyway, number four. As long as it's wide enough for the neck, that's all that matters. So it's just a matter of getting them in place. Like I say, that one's just popped out a lot. I'm thinking we're not going to need any glue, we're just going to press in really, really nice. And check these ends one to make sure they're wide enough. And they certainly aren't going to be wide enough. So yeah, that's not going to be a problem. So like I say, I'm just going to tap these in. And I'll go over to the fret press. I'm going to bring the fret press out. I'm not going to clamp it to the table or anything. I'm just going to bring the fret press out. I'm going to press these in. Um, like I say, using different calls. It can be all that's self-explanatory when I bring you back shortly. Moving on, with the frets tapped in, I've set up the fret press, which is basically at the moment it's an arbor press. We've been uh, adjusted to accept a call holder. I have a 14 inch call in there. And I've already been in and pressed all these ones at this end. So they are all nicely pressed in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just about to change the call. I've gone 14 inch up to this mark, something I marked earlier. I'm now going to change over to a 12 inch. And I'm going to move further back. I'm going to keep changing the calls. All the way down the neck until we get because down at this end we're nine and a half, so I'm just going to grab a screwdriver. And because I'm not gluing these in, I'm going to run some super glue at the edge of the slot. I've got absolutely no idea why that's not coming out, it doesn't seem to want to move. Oh, that's fantastic news. There you go. I'm going to drop the 12 in there. Hopefully, you can see the number 12 there. I'm going to carry on. Fortunately, I've got a brand new fret press on the way. It's a dedicated fret press by GMC Tools, somewhere based somewhere in Wales. It has cost me £430, but it's for pressing in frets on all guitars, including acoustics. It's a right modern piece of fandangled kit um, with lots of different gadgetry all over it. But anyway, now to this one. Now I'm going to move back one and I'm going to start pressing the ones I've already pressed in with the 14. And I'm going to hit them with the 12. So we're kind of going to overlap. Like so. I want to get to the overlap where the 10 is. I'm going to 
do an overlap again. Look at this, so far, so good. So you get the gist of it, so I'm going to crack on, get the rest of the neck done. When I come down here under the information to support it underneath with a neck brace, uh, I'm not going to need to do that in the future with the new jig on the way. But these have gone in nicely, I've been slightly hammered in anyway, so... We're now bending slightly on the neck, so what I'd like to do in this instance, you can't see from where you are, but where the carb is, underneath the neck in this area, I do like to take a piece of um, support or supporting felt. Now I had some out earlier. This one on the floor. Look, here you go. And what I'll do in this area is take a piece of padding. And what I'll do is I'll use one or two pieces depending on how much I'm going to need. And I'll just place it under that little bit of heel there, and that will give me enough support underneath. And we're going to move along we're going to do the same again and that's not quite giving me enough support now so i'll now go with a double thick piece we'll do exactly the same again and now you see with the sponge underneath line up the fret press and there you go and i'm able to move this one Again, a third piece or a second thick, third thickness, and there you go. And now I'm supported under this part of the neck. And we're exactly the same again with this one. And you know, this stops me putting extra pressure on the neck and uh, causing it, you know, I'm not going to cause it to snap. So I've got plenty in there, that's all good. And now I can remove this. I adapted that to fit. I can remove that, I can take the neck support, I've got one out somewhere, I'm going to use my Stumac one for this. This piece of goodness there, and there you go, well, now we have full support again, and I do believe I'm on this one. Now I'm one further down actually, but there you go, with the 12 and just press that one in. And again with this one. Press it in, check again. And we're just getting to know where we're going to change it over to the 10. So that's a 12. So you see this all pressed in really nicely. And now we're going to change the call again, we're going to change to a 10. So you see how it's working. Beautiful. Got the 10. Put the 10 in. So this is getting all the frets pressed in nicely. Back to here. We're going to go with the 12 or 12 frets, should I say. Pressing with the 10. So we now get to where we've overlapped where that next piece of tape is there. And we're going to go all the, way, all the way down with the 10 from about fret 4. We're going to change down to the 9. Oh, sorry, the 9.5. And, and I'm quite happy that these are going in really, really nicely. Now, these are over radiused, so we should not spring back. down with the 10 now here is a very critical part that I'm going to hammer the last one in because I cannot get the press correctly there's why another reason why I've ordered the um, fret press from GMC I'm going to grab a nine and a half Thank you. 
Do you want my nails in on and off? And we're just about done. So with the nine and a half, come to the last one here. That's well pressed in, that's fantastic. So we now have all of the frets pressed in. We've done an overlap where we did the changeover. And I do believe that all of these frets are now pressed in properly. And I'm going to let that sit for a while. And I'll come back and I'll check the frets with the fret rocker. And if I'm quite happy with it more or less level, I'll be eyeing up every little part. I'll come off and snip off all the ends. We'll drop a bead of glue down the slots. And uh, that should be enough to hold everything in place. Uh, to me, that looks really nice. I'm, gonna have a look. I'm just going to sight down the neck. That looks really, really good to me. Very happy with that. Also, I'm happy that everything's gone in right and it is well seated and it's going to stay where it needs to stay. I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how we radius the whole board on a compound radius. I'm happy with the way this has come out, so I'm going to cut the ends of the frets. And I've got my new Stumac cutters, and as good as my um, GMI ones were and have been for the past five or six years, these are better. And they warrant the price I paid for them, and they weren't that expensive. But I'm just going to get right into the ends of these frets, and we're just going to nip off right up to the edge of the finger wall. You can see where you are. We're not removing a great load of material, some of them right up to the edge anyway. But these are cutting straight through. And this is really hard for it why it's 25% nickel silver. Probably struggle a little bit more with stainless, but it's doing a grand job. You have to glue frets in all the time. It all depends on the state of the slots. And the slots in these were were fine. So I'm just prepping this ready for edging, beveling, and leveling. I will be doing the leveling first. You can't do edging and beveling until you've got them level. But the more material I get off here, the easier it will be down the line. And there you go, we have gone as close to the edge as we can get. We will finish these off, these edges off by filing. Uh, that again is a different story. So I've got all these frets in and seated really, really well. I might go over and press them in again, just to check. There are a couple of uh, edges down here where we have a little bit of chipping. Uh, that's a problem with uh, having a lacquered board. Got a little bit of chipping just down here because these boards are lacquered. That's why I normally recommend we lacquer them again. We don't always have to do that. And um, we're not gonna do it in this instance because it's gonna cost you another 85, 95, maybe 100 pounds because I have to send them away to be lacquered. Um, but end of the day, it's all about playability. Now, because I'm so uh, careful doing the edges, we will not be cutting into the lacquer. We might have lost a little bit of sheen here and there, but that'll all come back again. We have had to repair chip out, especially down these frets here. Uh, that just adds to the mojo. We've got a, a scratch in there as well. I will take a blade and we'll scratch that out. Oh, we're not scratch it out, we'll, we'll scrape that out. Because the glue is just a little bit proud of the surface, but that's just a matter of And that's it, that's done, that is now super smooth. So you can see it, little battle scar there. I like to keep those in, because it shows, you call it mojo, it just shows that the guitar has been used. You know, and you've got a couple of dints here. Right, I'll drop a little bit of super glue in that one there where we lost a chip. So just to show that the guitar is battle scarred, it's been used, 
and it'll give it a certain amount of mojo. End of the day, the playing surface is all about the frets. Your fingerboard is not the playing surface anyway, the frets are. So once we've got these leveled and recrowned, that's your playing surface. And I just think it gives the guitar character, it tells a story, so there you go. Before I get to levelling, I'm going to be doing the edges. Now I'm not going to be quite bevelling totally just yet, but I'm just getting the edges done. And you'll see there's a strip of tape down here and it's been cut into ever so slightly. And that's, I'll explain why in a minute, but you look at this side. The tape has not been touched and that's because this is how I do the edging. Now these edges are still protruding, but this side isn't. I've already started. So what I do is when I'm going to get to edging, I'm going to get a piece of foam, double thick. We'll stick that in the vise. It doesn't matter which way you have this. Now you can have it one way or the other. Get it in the vise. Tighten the vise, nice and tight. And now you see the reason for the tape. Why I put that tape is there is, once I've done these edges and filed down, once I start hitting the tape, I know I'm very close to the edge. And then I start doing it a lot more carefully because I don't want to be cutting into the lacquer. Or I certainly don't want to be going deeply into the lacquer. So this is what I'll do, I'll take a perfectly flat, this is a proper edging file I've removed. I used to have a, um, a holder for this that held it at 35 degrees. But I think it's easier by hand. So I'm going to take it and by hand, I will take the file and I'll very, very slightly angle the file. So you've got the edge of the neck there, it's just flat, and I'll just angle it. And this is how I start to file the edges of the frets. And what I do is, once I got close to the edge, what I do is I start to roll it over and bring it straight. And once I start removing paper, I know I'm close to where I need to be. And this is where I can feel it touching the tape there. So once I get to very close to where I want to be, like here, I'm removing tape. I'm going to take the file at the edge. I'm just going to go inside the tape and I'm going to go really, really steady. And I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to listen for it cutting. If it's not cutting, I'm going to angle it again. Like so. And I'll bring it up again to level. If it's cutting, fine. If it's, if it's not cutting, I angle it again. And that way we're not going to be cutting into the lacquer. And it takes experience to get do this, to get to know what you can get away with. And I'll start to bring it down towards the kind of bevel I want. Myself, I prefer a 15 to 20 degree bevel. I do it all by eye, I don't measure anything. I'm quite happy to let the frets go the full width of the neck. I'll have a feel and that feels pretty good and feel pretty much right up to the edge and what I do when I get there is I will brush one I'll brush the file I'll brush the edge of the neck and now it's now I'm going to remove the tape because I'm going to do it all by hand and eye and this is where the experience comes in You'll know you've hit the lacquer when it starts to go lighter because you take all that mojo and tint that you've had on there over the years. And we're very, very slightly into that, but that is not bad at all. Really, really happy with that. And what I'll do then is I will go and get a really smooth file. I'm going to knock all that somewhere. I don't know what I've done with it. What have I done with it? It's already out. This is my Valorb file. Number four cut, Swiss made. It is super smooth but super sharp and it has one perfectly flat edge which is here. And I'll just take this one and I will just skim across the edge. Remove any burrs we've got there, if any. Good. 
and that feels really nice. There's nothing cutting me there. Really smooth. I'm happy with that. And that's that side done. I've not got the bevels done properly yet. I'll do that later. But saying that, we might get away with that. But that feels really, really good. So that's that side done. Just to make sure we've not got anything protruding here. I might, be, oh, I might be a little bit high. Oh, we've got a little bit protruding just there. So I'm going to go again. Smooth file. Flat side down. Yeah, I can hear it. If it happens that we do go into the lacquer a bit more than we want to, I always take a bead of super glue and just run it down that edge there, which I think I'll do. But sometimes you get a neck and it will have a sly hump somewhere around this area. So we're not worried about any of that. I'm really quite pleased with that side. So I'll turn it over and do the other side. Just sight it down the neck. That looks fantastic. Really pleased with that. So that's one side done, it's not beveled yet, but we are edged. That's beautiful. So I'm going to crack on, get the other side done, and then we'll move on to getting some beveling and leveling done. Same thing as I did with the other neck that just came in for leveling. We've got it all uh, strapped to, well not strapped, clamped to the table, so it's not going to move anywhere, where we're supported underneath, and we have the neck set as straight as we can get it. Hang on a minute, make sure we are still straight because I've had this sat just to make sure it's settled. Yeah, we are dead straight. And what I like to do is we are going to go across with a leveling beam, we're going to be going across with 400 uh, 240 grit, the most coarse of the two, and we're just going to be following the actual string lines uh, because we do have a 14 inch radius at this end, nine and a half at this end. Now I need to be careful that I don't remove too much from this end, which is easily done because you're filing a lot less fret, so I need to concentrate more up here. Now, before we start doing anything, we need to make sure that we have maintained the radius <coughs> at each end correctly. This one being nine and a half, this one being 14. I think I've already shown this in an earlier part of a video, but we're just gonna check again and just check that we have a radius matched and yeah, happy with that. That's a nine and a half. And go to the other end and get the 14 and check there. And yeah, it's beautiful. 14 as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going over with a fret rocker first and find out where the highest spots are. I'm going to mark them. Because I'm going to file those areas first. <clears throat> and I'm going to use the leveling, spot leveling file. So what I need is a permanent marker, fret rocker, just so I know when I'm going to be working. And just on this edge. And we're going to get a few high spots, it's normal. Something else I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be running beads of super glue just down some of the edges where there's a couple of little tiny gaps. Where well, we've got some chip out. You're always going to get chip out on a lacquered neck. Very, very rare. Oh, one thing I've done off camera that I didn't tell you about is I've beveled each side so each side is matching. Bevels are really quite shallow at this end, 15 odd degrees, probably 15, 20 degrees all along the length. <clears throat> the beveling edge files you normally get are normally a 35 degree affair. I don't like going that much. So I do it by hand, completely by hand. Oh, 
these are all level, all this for you there, which is brilliant. Like I say, we're spot level all these areas. And once we've got them more or less level with the ones around them, we're going to scoot across the whole lot. Massively higher that one. I'm going to make sure that's seated right. This is high, more or less all the way across. I'm going to hit this with a mallet on this side, but it, but it is very well seated, so you know, we just file off what needs filing off. And that's it, everything is marked off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten frets with high spots. And what I like to do is before I hit them with a the file, just want to check that we don't need a stupid amount of material removing. And the ones at this end don't. So I'm just gonna Work on these at this end. I'm just going to slightly mark these ones around them with dots. Just to so I don't move too much material from the ones around them. And that's going to help me see where I am. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to check anyway. side So please draw that, that's done. Can you see where it's going? So concentrate on this end again. Let me file do the work.
be scared. And I've removed the tip, quite a bit of material from there, but don't be scared. These are really high frets in there, 1.4 mil high, 1.2 millimeters higher than most fret wire. Got a little bit there. We're not removing a lot of height, we're just removing the high spots. This one needs a lot of work, this one here. Or you've removed enough material. So I'm using my fingers this far side just to keep the file going in the right direction. Install high frets. You've got a lot of margin. I say margin for error. It's not margin for error. You've got a lot to work with. So it's high there. We're high there. And just a little bit right on the edge there. Still high. I'm going to concentrate on this little bit here. stage where I'm still removing a little bit more material from one side or another. I'm going to mark where that is. I'm going to grab another file. I'm going to spot that bit. Maybe I've left that file and I've left it out here. Just check again. Just 
just on this edge. Take your time, and we're good there. Back up to here. Put so on this corner here. Just this area. And I think we should just about be where we want to be. So a little bit high on that little edge there. So what we're looking to do in a second is to get them all level with each other. Okay, just a tiny, tiny bit there. Where are we? Pretty good. So once we get to that stage where we've done all the spot level, then we're going to do the whole lot in one go. Permanent marker. And this is where get the job done proper. Pen them all up. I'm just going to sight down the length of the neck in a moment from this end just to see how uniform we've got because it might take a bit more off that side than this side I don't know yet but we'll sort that out with the levelling beam in a minute so now we've done the spot levelling we've got them all more or less where we want them to be I'm going to do the lot and what I need to do is remove all of the pen using the 240 grip this is emery cloth not paper long lasting i've already done a couple of jobs with this it may be too smooth but I don't, it's not stainless steel fret wise so we should be okay now what we're going to do is we're going to follow the line of the strings so we're going to go that way we're going to come across we're going to go slightly that way when we get to the middle we're going to go straight and then we're going to go flare out again at this end and like so so we're going to start in the middle A bit more pressure this end than that end. Do what goes. We'll remove too much material. This ends a lot more frets up here. See how we go in, and all the middle is clear of ink. So that's good news. here that is all of the pen just about off we're just going to turn around keep going till all the pen is gone And 
that looks pretty good. <clears throat> I don't think we're exactly level yet, but we are certainly getting there. Now what I want to do is make sure we're moving as much material from the tops of these as we are at the same at this end here, tops here. So this is looking pretty good. Don't think we're quite there yet. We need to do a little bit more. But very, very promising. Notice how I kept the video running. I was going to turn it off, but I thought, you know what? I'll just get it all on video. And that's going to make the video a lot longer, but very pleased with this so far. So far so good. I think we are level. Well that has gone very well. I didn't expect it to go to get done that quickly. So I'm really, really pleased with it. I've got the same amount of material move, removed from these frets at this end as we do with those at this end. So it means we've got a good even level. Now I'm going to go across again, but I'm going to go with the 400 grit this time to smooth it all off and remove some of these scratches. And again, I want to remove all of the pen, but I want all of the pen coming off here. I don't want to go back into it. You see, I don't finish the bevels off these edges until I've got the frets properly level because I can shape them properly once they're crowned. Gotta get the frets right. You've got to get the neck as straight as you possibly can and get the frets level because otherwise there's no point. There's no point putting a neck on a guitar if the frets aren't level. If the neck's not straight and the frets aren't level. Okay, so 400 grit this side. Give it a brush off. The same again, starting in the centre. A lot smoother. overnight for everything to settle and we'll come back tomorrow check everything again and if it's all level in the morning we'll be able to be crowning what I will do is first thing in the morning is I'll clean the fingerboard off and all the wood off and everything and we are level there that's excellent. So we are level. We're just going to give it a few more strokes of 400.
I'm just evening everything out now, making sure the thickness of the tops or the amount of material I remove off the tops is uniform. And that, my friends, is exactly where we need to be. That is looking good. So that's I'm going to leave it overnight. That's I'm going to clean up right now. I'm going to leave that overnight to settle. I'm going to come back and check it in the morning. If we're fresh level, we are ready. We're going to be ready for uh, crowning and polishing. Right, one clean cloth. That was Napa, I was just rubbing across there. Or Zippo lighter fluid as we use over here. We don't get that we can't get Napa. Just clean off all the pen and any dirt on the fingerboard. We'll clean all this one out. We'll be oiling this over the top of the lacquer. Before I finish it off. Just want to do this just to get any bits of grease off there or anything, because this will dry out anything. I want to go across with the super glue tomorrow in some of the areas. It's going to take better. And there you go. So that's enough for today. I will be back tomorrow. Or next day, I'm just back in from the uh, doctors. I've been to vets and doctors this morning. Uh, first chance I've had to, uh, or I've got to look at this neck, and um, just want to determine that everything is right with the neck. So we're going to check the radius here, the radius here, and then we're going to check that the frets are level and the neck is straight. I already know the neck is straight. So have a look. That is a straight neck, which is always pleasing. Nine and a half inch radius here. Again, beautiful. Let's look for a 14. Again, fantastic. Yep, spot on. So happy with that. And check the frets for level. So, like I say, it's sat overnight. I'm thinking it's going to be pretty much spot on. No high frets at all so far. Very, very good. Before I do anything else, or before I move on to crowning the frets and sorting out the beveled edges, getting them all rounded off after the crowning, there's a little bit of cosmetic work I need to do on the edges of some frets. More about that in a second, just want to check these. There's one very, very slightly high fret. I think it was number 16. I just logged it as I went by it. But everything else is spot on. Let me just check that 16 again. Yeah, one I missed just here. I'm going to go over that with a flat file. This is one of the particularly high frets. Could just be a fact that I've not got the top of the set properly and I've just left a little bit on one angle and I just need to remove a tiny bit but let's have a look again
very, very tiny amount, so we like to get it absolutely spot on. And there you go, we're in. And we are done. And these frets are spot on level. We've got the right radius there, the right radius there, with the next straight. Now I can feel a bit of sharpness on top is we need to round these edges over again, but we can't, we don't need to do anything other than re-crown the frets, and that's to where we flatten them on the top, we need to rebuild that crown. I'm not going to do that yet because there are a couple of places there's a little bit of a chip there that isn't seated correctly and there. I actually think that one is. This one isn't though. And there's some tiny little holes here uh, where we removed, well when we removed the frets it took some um, lacquer with it. So I'm going to fill that in with just a bead of super glue. Got a really fine pipette type tool to drop some super glue just in these holes here. Just a couple of frets. So these are things I'm going to do off camera. Once that's done I'm going to tape up the fingerboard. We'll tape up the edge of the neck and we're going to get on to crowning the frets. I will show you how we crown the frets when I'm ready to do so. A couple of things I'm going to be doing now. Recrowning the frets, then doing the beveled edges. Now you may notice from the angle uh, that my bevels here are not that steep. They're not 35 degrees like a lot of people do, they're nearer 20 degrees because that gives us more width of fret to use. Uh, but first I'm going to be crowned. I can't do the bevels until I've crowned because these, with the frets being flat there's no point me arcing them round so we need to get them re-crowned. So I'm crowning them and using my Stumac file. It's got, if it, closest to you is a long cut, closest to me is a short cut. Turn it 180 degrees, closest to you a short cut, closest to me a long cut. Good thing about this file is it will not touch the top of the fret but it will Rebuild that crown. It'll go the short side will cut a little, the long side will cut a lot, and it'll cut at different angles. It'll get us pretty close to the proper arc we need. I will finish off with this profiling file which cuts the perfect um, crown or shapes the perfect crown. I use this just if there's any inconsistencies from using this and anywhere where the sharp edges on that crown, which you're going to get when you're using two flat files. Uh, this will just round everything off nicely. Once that's done, it means the ends of the frets, this side and this side, are going to have that lovely crown. Then we can come in and we can carve over and round them off so they're nice and soft when our fingers run down the fingerboard or down the edge of the neck when we're playing. So I've just done two. I'm going to show you the third one. I'll take any side of the file. It's a matter of going across, leaving a thin black line down the centre. Now this is caught in short, short one side along the other, so we need to make sure we turn it 180 degrees and that will leave us with a nice black line down the centre. The thing about it is we cannot cut material on the top of the fret because it doesn't hit the top fret. So we've got a nice thin black line down the centre of the fret there. We've now got that crown built. We always wipe the file after a fret. And then we'll come in and finish off with this one and again we'll do the edge over the top edge again. I've already done these two, I've not done them with this file, so I'm going to do them with this file. The great thing about having these diamond files is it doesn't take you too long. Certainly in the olden days it used to take a lot longer when you're using a three-cornered file and you had to be good. It just makes it a lot easier, it takes all the hard work out of it and it makes everything consistent. So we have nice, three nice frets done there. Still got the black line down the centre. Um, I'll just grab a fret rocker and we're just going to check. Now because we've removed a height we shouldn't get a rocking fret. And we don't have a rocking fret so we maintain the level which is fantastic and that's just great. Like I say because we're not removing the tops we maintain the level all the way across. Uh, one more thing I need to do, I need to grab another file. I keep meaning to buy a smaller one of these. This is my Swiss file, it's by Valorb. It's a number four cut, super smooth, super sharp. We have a safe edge and with the safe edge down we're just going to roll over these bevels and you can really do it in three strokes like that. And that because we've now got that bevel, we can just roll these edges over, remove any sharpness. I'll be sanding these later on as well. But that's just to show you how to go. And when I come to this side, I'll turn the neck round and we'll go. We're always working this way, away from the sole. So really simple. 
it's going to take me, not take me too long, um, but I'm going to do that. Once that's done, once I've got all this done and the bevels done this side, I'll flip it round, I'll come and do all these bevels. It's just easier to work away from yourself. Once that's done, we can move on to the next part. Not quite the final act, as I'm going to need to fit a nut later, but we are down to polishing, or final polishing, the frets. And um, I've got a strip of 600 grit there, which I'm going to use in, in a minute. Uh, I'm going to be going over with six different grits of sandpaper when I polish the frets. Six different grits here from 600 through to 2000. What I will be doing first is I'll just be hitting the frets with a little bit of 400 grit. So we're actually going to go with seven grits. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to remove the pen with this. And because once the pen's removed, we know we're going to we've also remove both deeper scratches. So that's what I'm going to do with that. Now this piece of 600 is for something totally different. And that is to just round over these fret edges here. That's all I'm using this for. And round over these fret edges, remove any sharpness. I've already rolled them over with a file. But this will make them nice and smooth. You won't feel the frets at all when you slide your hand up the neck. So that's it. It really is that simple. The thing is with this, it takes a long time to do. And it is quite boring. It's going to take me a while. Like I say, I'm going to be going with seven grits of paper, including the four on roof. And then I'm going to finish off with um, the finest grade steel wool. Or so extra fine. Grade zero, 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 zero. But yeah, we're just rolling these frets over. Let me see how it works. And now you see why we tape up the fingerboard on the side of the neck. I'm just going to show this side. And I'm going to show how we polish a fret. So we'll start with this one, throw this one away, and I can see the deep scratches. You can't. I've got a light beaming down on it, an LED light beaming down. Show me. I can see all of the scratches across the top of the fret. And this is going to remove or dig really dig into those scratches. And then we're just going to go over with six different grits of paper. This one being 600 grit. And this will do the whole fingerboard. It's just a matter of getting over the top. And then on the side nearest to you. And on the side furthest away from you. And back over the top. And that is the first polish with the first grit on that fret. Like I say, it's going to take me a while to do this. There you go, that one's done. Five more grits to go on that one, but that already looks fantastic. No, the deep scratches are already off there. I'm just going to go with finer and finer grit till there's no scratches whatsoever. And we're going to bring it up to a shine with the uh, steel wall a little bit later on. So there you go. The back end of polishing, been through seven grits of paper. Just going to finish off with finest grade steel wall. The frets look absolutely fantastic. Lovely smooth rolled over bevels now. You won't feel that at all with your hand. And just beautiful. What I'm going to do is just go up the edge first. Put some tiny scratches on the end of the frets, but we're going to polish those out anyway. Just get these bevels done. It just shows we're going to have to do our job properly to remove all these scratches. So there you go. And then it's just a matter of all the way straight over and this really brings them up to a beautiful shine. Doesn't take off as long using the uh, steel wall as it does using the sandpaper. And that's really it. So I'm going to crack on, get these done. Once it's done, we'll remove the tape. We'll check the edges of everything, sure it's going to be alright. We'll look at getting a nut put in. This is always the best part of the uh, polishing, peeling away the tape to see 
home job you made on the fret. And they look fantastic. So there you go. It's a matter of I've got to just clean up a couple of areas on the fingerboard. But yeah, that looks pretty those frets look amazing. I will give us a clean up, get some naphtha on here later, clean up all the excess dust that's probably just fell a little bit towards the edge. And the frets. So yeah, once this has been cleaned up, we're going to go and get a new nut, fit a new nut in there, and then we will be, we will be good to go. Okay hey guys, we are not quite complete, but I'm going to finish the video here. I'm going to take the guitar as complete. I've got the tuners back on. I've got the nut installed beautifully, it might have had. Fortunately, this nut fitted perfectly. I buy these in bulk, bow nut. I just had to cut the nib off the bottom. Uh, so, so we get the curve right because these are pre-radiused and that one just happens to fit perfectly. All I've got to do with this is I'm going to stick this neck on one of my guitars and I'm going to set it up and I'm going to cut these nuts off. So that's all I have to do. So I'm just going to show the nuts fitted there. And let's have a look at the frets. There you go. Just wonderful. Don't forget this is a compound radius, nine and a half inch at this end. 14 at that. We've got the compound, the radius set beautifully, both ends, and again there. Really pleased with this. Like I say, the nut needs to be cut. Probably see it better from that angle. I'm going to shape that nut. I'm going to get it on a guitar. Uh, I'll not be shaping it until I've cut the slots to the correct depth. I will be using my Hosco nut slot files. These gubbins here cut the perfect. Um, arc for the string slots or perfect semicircle should I say and yeah really good uh, a couple of things there were a couple of chipped areas that the owner knows about nothing we could do about that uh, the lacquer was built up right up, right up to the sides or nearly the top of the frets this was the most difficult fret pull I have ever had ever I had to really get my cutters or my pullers under there um, ideally getting this really lacquered uh, would have probably well would have been a better idea because you wouldn't have seen um, any of this like this stuff here but I think it gives it mojo uh, the owner is perfectly happy with it there's dings and dongs and nicks in the neck anyway so it's not really altered anything and at the end of the day the plain surface is at the top of the frets but yeah all in all a good job a job well done uh, if we hadn't relacquered this, you wouldn't see any of these indentations because they'd all be filled in with lacquer. But decided not to go with a lacquer, which would have cost probably another £8,500. But that's absolutely fine. So that one is done. So both necks are done. I'm going to ship them out tomorrow, uh, fully insured, of course. Um, but these are done. So you've got the first one, which was a strap neck, which was a compound radius again. Needed a fret level and reprofile and polish. Uh, which we did this being the strat one again compound radius uh, the strat it's, by the way was a uh, stainless steel frets these are 25 percent nickel silver uh, it's my chosen my preferred fret wire made by St. Tom's it's the hardest nickel silver fret wire on the planet and it is beautiful those frets feel fantastic beautifully rounded really really nice smooth frets these should last I don't know how long they're gonna last certainly gonna last a lot longer than standard fret wire you want to be getting 20, 30 years out of this easily. I don't know, I've never put it to the test. Uh, there will be somewhere down the line, but uh, it will certainly last a lot longer than most fret wire. So that one is done. Both necks are done. They're ready to go back to the owner. Once I've, well, I've got to cut that nut, as I mentioned. But that is it. This project, or this double project, is finished. So one thing to remind you of before I go is my website, fretfriend.co.uk, or even better, facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. -E -E I am Victor. I am your fret friend. Until next time, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other. And I'll see you in the next one.